Welcome to Vegas Circle with Paki and Chris. And today joining the circle, we are sitting down with this entrepreneur and businessman who is the founder of PMK Consulting and is the chief partnership officer for Luso Auto Spa and Design. Uh, we got Mr. Peter Cross. So hey welcome guys. to the circle, brother. Oh, I appreciate welcome. it. Really so, happy to be here. So I got a chance to meet you, man, from a yeah. mutual friend of ours, Blake Wynn. So I got to give him a shout out. Uh, so I met him at, at your event yep. at, at Luso last month, uh, which was an awesome event. Thank you. Got a chance to network with a lot of people, and uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But mm-hmm. we kind of want to just first start off with just your amazing business story. You got an amazing business background, done a lot. You being the CEO of PLI, mm-hmm. I thought that was very interesting mm-hmm. with what, what you've been able to do with that and how... Sure. You kind of started that, and and, uh, for our listeners, PLI is basically the world's largest hotel key uh, card, gift, and loyalty card manufacturer. Mm -hmm. You did some amazing, huge (laughs) partnerships. We go, I want to get into, and uh, you know, with companies like Starbucks and Target. But Mm -hmm. I want them to hear it from your perspective. Sure. Can you kind of start off with that? I know you were the CEO for the company for about ten years, and you guys eventually sold it. Yeah, and to to be fair, I did. I didn't start the company, so I I joined it at about nineteen million in revenue. Okay. Um, A very good friend of mine that I'd known for many years was uh, the general manager, president at the time. Uh, and like a lot of companies, they kind of hit a level. They hit a glass ceiling. They were stuck at this like 18, 19 mm-hmm. million number. Mm-hmm. Couldn't break past it. Uh, then 2008 and nine, we all know the economic downturn happened. Yep. Uh, they were really not diversified in their business at all. They were heavily involved in just the hospitality industry. Mm-hmm. So they were making the key cards, as you mentioned, for all the hotels. Uh, the hospitality market got pretty crushed in 2008 and nine, or at least yeah. there was a pretty significant downturn. Not by COVID standards now. It's obviously a whole different level. But... Um, it was. It went down. So they experienced their first downturn in a long time. Um, I had been involved with them previously with some other business interests, uh, and they said, "Hey, you know, what would it take to get you on board and get you to really help us get to that next sure. level?" And that's that's kind of the theme you're going to hear through a lot of our discussion. Is that's what I do is help companies get to that next level. Yeah. So again, they had been stuck at this 19 million for years. Came in. Um, I set benchmarking goals for myself like a lot of people do. And I yeah. said, well, what, what happens when we get to 50 million? Mm-hmm. What happens when we get to 100 million? What happens mm-hmm. when we get to 200 million? Uh, and frankly, I had partners and a board of directors that thought I was a bit um, bold to say the least. You know, <laughs> to even talk about those kinds of numbers. Because mm-hmm. all they had known is this, again, 15, 18, you know, like somewhere in that range. Um, so they were, again, an 18, 19 million dollar company, 3 million in EBITDA. Uh, over the time that I was there, uh, we grew it to over 250 million and Jeez. 30 million in EBITDA. Wow. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a fun ride. It was a lot of growth. Um, I started actually, funny enough, as their chief sales and marketing officer. Mm. Uh, my background is predominantly sales and marketing, and I've really developed a lot of production and operational efficiency skills along the way. Um, and then I became the COO while I was also so held both titles, chief sales and marketing officer and COO. Mm. Frankly, because my board and partners were like, "Okay, wise guy, you're proven you can sell more than we can manufacture." Now you got to help us manufacture as much as you can sell. <laughs> so back up your words. Yeah, yeah so yeah. yeah, put your money where your mouth is, so to speak. Uh, so we did that, and then eventually, as, as you said, I became the president and CEO. Uh, very exciting. Uh, we built uh, we built something I'm still very proud of to this day. Um, you know, frankly, I had partners, some, two of which were late 70s, early 80s, mm-hmm. uh, a couple of them, and it was just really time for them to have an exit and mm-hmm. do kind of their estate planning and all that kind of stuff. So, and we had grown way beyond their imagination mm-hmm. of whatever this company was going to be supposed to be. Uh, at one point, they were going to sell the business for $23 million. Uh, I can wow. tell you we sold it for quite a bit more than that yeah. <laughs> yeah. down the road. Uh, so they, they were very happy, but it was time for them to exit. And that's what really prompted us to, to do, it, do yeah. an exit, sell it to private equity uh, in 2018. So that's uh, awesome. Yeah. yeah, it seems like yeah. a pretty big, yeah. <clears throat> you know, that's a huge m- momentum boost, right? To go from yeah. that amount of dollar value yeah. to ultimately what you ended up exiting at. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, being a person that comes into these companies and, uh, you know, helps get them to that next level. Mm-hmm. Was there one thing specific that you did? Or is there like a process that you kind of follow to get that from point A to point B? Or is it just take it as it goes and make decisions on the fly that you think are ultimately the best that need to happen at that point in time? Well, it's actually probably a little bit of all the above. <laughs> so there's yeah. just, they're just like, you can try and anticipate everything in business. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah. I'm not one to overthink. I don't want to underthink, but you don't want to overthink. Mm-hmm. You know, you could what if yourself to death, mm-hmm. right? So some things you just take as they come. Uh, but I do I do have a formulary sort of way that I approach a business, right? The first 30, 60, 90 days in particular, the way you sort of analyze. Same thing mm-hmm. I do in my consultant practice is you get in there, you kind of walk softly, carry a big stick as the expression goes. Yeah. Uh, take it all in, learn as much as you can about the business. And, and that's what I do when I step into whether I'm a consultant or I'm the CEO of the actual organization. Um, 
the thing I'm most passionate about, and, and we can talk about it as much as you'll allow me to, yeah. um, is corporate culture. Mm -hmm. I was, that's what I wanted to get uh, into. It's <laughs> everything. Yeah. It's everything. Yeah. And that, that to me has been the key difference in every organization I've been a part of mm -hmm. and every turnaround story that I've been a part of. Uh, the first place I had to really focus was on the corporate culture. Yeah. Um, assuming you've got talent, tools, resources, it's, then it's down to culture. Yeah. Um, you know, we all use sports analogies in business, right? It's very common. And I think when we talked briefly, yeah. we talked yeah. about this. And, you know, you could have all the talent in the locker room. You know, if that culture is wrong in the locker mm -hmm. room, if that coaching is wrong, that leadership is wrong, they're not going to win anything. As soon as I would go to state right now, Draymond is yeah. smack. That's how to pull. I, yeah. I would pick yeah. on my Yankees, you yeah. know, for that. Oh, yeah, they Yankees, had, they, yeah. They had the yeah. most expensive bullpen in, yeah. uh, in locker room at one point in baseball. Yeah. Couldn't win anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, why? Because the, the culture was wrong. Yeah. Um, just their whole attitude, the way they approached the game at that time was wrong. You get that right, and frankly, not to sound corny, that's when magic happens. Yeah. Um, and that was really a part of the key at – at PLI was, you know, when I got there, uh, they were this small little company in Western North Carolina and Asheville, North Carolina, and they felt like a small company. They acted like a small company. Uh, and, you know, my whole philosophy is if you want to be a $100 million company, you have to start acting like it now. Yeah. Yes. You, you, you can't wait until you're close to it and go, hey, I should probably start there. <laughs> yeah. That's true. It's too late. It's That's way true. too late. So, um, again, I joined an organization at 19 million saying, I want to be a $100 million company. I was like, all right, buddy, calm down. Like, Shut take out. it easy, yeah. relax. Yeah. But no, you got to start putting those systems and those policies and those procedures and those practices and those disciplines. Mm -hmm. And all that's all part of the culture. Yeah. Um, I am an unapologetic, absolute high expectation guy. Um, but I'm fair and I'm reasonable. Uh, I listen, you know, and it's again, that's all part of that culture. Yeah. Um, Again, some of these words get, you know, overused and corny, but I am a firm believer in servant leadership. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's been a real key to the growth and success I've been able to really bring to organizations because I believe, I, you know, I work for them. They don't work for me. Yeah. Uh, my job is to provide them with the tools. Um, I joked at my last company, my title should have been eliminator of excuses, not CEO, because <laughs> that's really the job of the CEO, yeah, right? Yeah, you, you have, you have yeah. department heads and people that come to you and they're all like, well, I got this problem. Well, okay, well, what if I solve that problem for you? Then what? All right? Then your department head pauses and goes, "Oh crap, he's going to actually get that obstacle out of my way." Now yeah. I got to figure out, right? And that's that's how you keep moving forward. That's how you keep yeah. moving forward. How do you think you learned that? Did you have mentors and things like that that kind of put you in that perspective, or how did you? You know what I mean? Like, how did you put that together? Yeah, I I think it's yes. I had some really great mentors early on in my career. Okay. Um, some people that I still look up to to this day. That mm -hmm. again, very early on, said again that unapologetic word is one of my favorites because mm -hmm. if you believe in something strongly enough, mm -hmm. you, you got to be unapologetic about it. And you yeah. got to be committed to it because mm -hmm. if you're wishy washy on it. Your whole organization is yeah. going to be wishy-washy on it, right? That's uh, Chris Tyler. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know, no gray like, area. Eh, kind of, yeah. sort of. Yeah. No, then, of course, that's going to permeate through the whole organization. Yeah. Um, so that unapologetic thing is something I learned from a, a mentor of mine very early on. I started my career, actually, with BMW, something I'm very proud of. Okay. Yeah. A great organization. Great cars, but beyond that, just a great company. Uh, one of the best car companies out there. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize, again, they own Rolls-Royce. They own, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're quite the company in a lot of ways. But... Uh, early early mentor I had there, he was the guy. He was all good with the catchphrases and the buzzwords, and the, <laughs> yeah. you know he was a sales and marketing guy. So that's what he did. But uh, no, that again, that unapologetic thing was big. The rest I think was self taught, self learned. Yeah. Um, a lot of observation. I'm a student of people, love yeah. people. I'm a Gemini, so my wife will tell you I got a I got to learn everything. I got to take everything in. I got to know everything about everything. Um, voracious reader, stuff like that. You mm -hmm. know, it's just now it's YouTube videos, right? I just you can learn. I can watch a hundred yeah. a day. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna like turn me. that off. <laughs> so <laughs> literally, so like no, me. no, yeah. I can literally yeah. watch a hundred a day. I just get yeah. in that hole, and I'm just like, I mm. have to take in content. Yeah. I have to take in information. So that's that's been my whole life and whole career. Um, you know, I'm at, I, I'm older than I think I look, I'm, I'm 52. So it's two years young. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but you know, I've, I've learned a lot and look, you, nobody's perfect and we all make mistakes, you know, yeah. personal mistakes, professional mistakes. Um, but they're those are all learning opportunities. Yeah. Uh, and I've taken those too. How do you feel about now with regular university education versus real world oh, education? Yeah. That's, that's what I wanted to get into. <laughs> right. Cause um, I'm very curious your perspective on it, right? Because 
you understand the systems. You understand how to put things in place. You understand yep. culture. You know, Chris and I talk a lot about he's very good at building systems and then implementing them versus being in the gray area. Just follow the book type type yep. of thing, right? And then hold people accountable. Yeah. But you know what you're starting to see now is that people want to just jump right through that. <laughs> Well, it's a generational the easy thing, way. too. The yeah, easy way. The easy yeah. Yeah. So I'm very curious, your perspective of being in the corporate world and, and building and, and having the capital and doing all those things, you know, for our listeners that, you know, maybe they're trying to decide, hey, they want to go to school or mm -hmm. maybe wait a little bit and then, you know, bump the head a little bit. Yep. But I'm just curious what you have. Yeah. So I have a very strong opinion on this, actually. Yep. So I'll try and temper it a little bit for just, but um, if, here's the thing, there's an unfair reality in sort of criteria that most companies put in place where you have to have a certain degree. It's like sort of the barrier mm -hmm. of entry. Mm -hmm. You won't even get the interview if you don't have at least the bachelor's or mm -hmm. whatever. I think that's a mistake on companies' part. I look for talent. I look for aptitude. Yep. Um, I'd rather have somebody with five years of work experience than a piece of paper, personally. Um, I've, I've, hired, I've hired Harvard MBAs that were the worst employees I've ever had. <laughs> No offense, Harvard, sorry. Yeah. Uh, but they were the worst employees I ever had. And I hired guys that barely made it through high school that were some of my best. So mm -hmm. I think it's more about aptitude, talent, mm -hmm. drive, ambition. Those are the things that I look for. Again, being yeah. a student of people, those mm -hmm. are the things that really I focus on. But again, there are companies out there that won't even let you through the door without that piece of paper. And I think that's and I think that's being rethought a little bit. Yeah. Um, conventional education right now, if you if you need a degree or you're taking an advanced degree, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to be in some specific profession where that's needed, all for it, go for it. Mm -hmm. Love my daughter to death, paid for a four-year education, had a very expensive school. Um, she was a uh, theater major, uh, you know, took some marketing classes and some other stuff in between. I like to tell people she was a marketing major. She, <laughs> she corrects me very quickly that yeah. that was not the case. Um, you know, but she's, I love her to death, but she's working in a coffee shop in LA right now. That's right. Wild. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, everybody has their journey and school was fantastic for her. It was a great learning experience and for her to grow up and mature, mm -hmm. which I think for a lot of kids these days, that's an important part of it. Yes. Um, yeah. you know, we couldn't wait to get out of the house, 17, 18 years old yeah. and chart our own path and do our own thing. That is not what's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having the conversation with kids now, that's like we were talking all over right you know, it's funny you said it because, you know, my dad worked in the corporate world, built businesses and things. And um, but I couldn't wait. I'm like, yeah. let's. And he's like, all right, go. Yeah. When, when, when you want to go, I'll help you. Yeah. You know, but now with my kids, like you're starting to learn. Like we talked about YouTube videos. Um, you know, kids are learning so much mm -hmm. and they're making so much money online. And like, you know, what was the gentleman we were talking about the other day? The big YouTuber, Mr. Beast. Oh, yeah. Mr. Yeah, Beast. Mr. Beast is yeah. it's turning down a billion dollars and he's just so much content there out there. But. I'm glad you're able to say that. So you do you believe that it's the individual person or do you or would you would you suggest that like maybe you wait, you know, to your 23, 24, 25 mm -hmm. and then maybe make the decision to you spend like you said four year four year degree is is a big ticket, you know, a lot it's of a times. Big, it's a big look and the other thing too is you look at some of these requirements for jobs and I want yeah. you to have a degree and I want you to have 10 years of work experience mm -hmm. and you're only 24 <laughs> yeah, years yeah. old. Yes. They don't yeah. have a, how is that possible? <laughs> exactly. Yep. But that's what companies are doing to kids. Um, yeah. it's I'm watching my own kids go through it right now. Again, I shared with you, you know, I've got an 18-year-old, 21-year-old, 23-year-old, mm -hmm. 25-year-old. Uh, and they're all right in the thick of it right now, right? And they're trying to find their way. I mean, you know, again, I my daughter's going to give me heck for all those comments. But, um, you know, she's chasing her Hollywood dream right now, her and her boyfriend in L.A., and I support it a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. But I can't help but question, should she have maybe started that journey four years earlier, just gone to L.A. and chased after it? But she wasn't, I don't think, emotionally ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so that four years of college beyond the education also gave her time to grow up. Yeah. So I think it's I think it's on an individual by individual basis. I was very mature for my age, right? 17, 18 years old. My mom used to joke I was 18 going on 35, right? So mm. um, not everybody's like that. Yeah. So I think they need those few years. Um, yeah. I think trade schools get a bad rap, and I think people should focus on that depending on some of the professions they want to look at because mm -hmm. you can learn a trade, make really good money, support your family, and not come out of school with $200,000 yeah. in debt. For real. Um, and I think that's people something people should consider a bit more. Uh, and that stigma should go away. Oh, you went to trade school. Okay. But, you know, yeah. make, I make good money. I'm supporting my family. Yeah. You know, a regular and, you have a trade. and I got a trade and yeah. I got a skill and I, I can take that skill anywhere. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's evolving right now. I think school in general is really evolving. I'm a bit of a observer of this because it's, yeah. you know, right now the, the job and the talent pool 
as I look at people to employ in, in the variety of businesses that I'm involved in, whether it be from the automotive side, mm -hmm. where we're hiring hourly car detailing guys mm -hmm. um, that are skilled workers, right? I mean, this is this mm -hmm. is a craft that they do. I'm not talking about this guy's hosing down cars. I mean, True. we're really reconditioning and doing things. Um, you know, from those guys to corporate executives, right, and everybody in between. And right now, there's a glut of talent. Um, I mean, I'm sure you've heard about this from For sure. a lot of people you've yeah. interviewed. Um, and again, I, I take aptitude. I say all the time, aptitude and attitude. Show me you got the skills. Show me you got the experience. I could teach you anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. I could teach you what you need to know. And I'd almost rather teach you because I don't want you coming in here with any bad habits. Yeah. Because inevitably you're going to come ego in. kicks in. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, yeah. I know everything. I yeah, know how yeah. to do this. Yep. Um, and right now, and not to beat on this younger generation, but they, they come into the room thinking they're the smartest people in the room every time. Um, it's really doing them a disservice. Yeah. It's doing them a yeah. disservice in interviews. It's doing them a disservice in the job market. Um, I mean, I remember, forget, I hired an assistant straight out of school, brilliant young lady, uh, motivated, hardworking, came from a good school, one of the best assistants I ever had. She was with me six months, wanted to be the VP of something, you know, instantaneously. We had a job opening and she wanted to apply for it. She asked my permission. I'm like, you just started. You've yeah. been out of school six months. <laughs> yeah. Nobody cares that you were whatever, cum laude this and mm. president of that. That was then. Mm -hmm. This is life now. This is the real world. If that got you here. That got you mm -hmm. in the door. Now you got to prove yourself all over again. And unfortunately for this generation, I think that's something they're not quite learning it. Yeah. Le they're learning yeah. that the hard way. Yeah. Um, you know, we we you know we say we paid our dues. It's such an overused expression, mm -hmm. but we really did. Yeah. We well, learned so much from it too. You know yeah. what I mean? From like you said, we talk about culture is. You you basically you building trust, mm -hmm. working for companies, and then things get hard. Obviously, in the corporate world, you got to make decisions, things like that, and they earn your trust from that, and and, and learn your leadership yeah. styles from that. So, but you touched um, on it earlier. We're dealing with also, and sorry, we're dealing with a new economy, right? I mean, you yes. can make money yeah. on YouTube, and we don't have to talk about some of the other platforms. Yeah. But yeah. there yeah. are a lot of people making a lot of money they from are. the comfort of their home. They yeah, are. and Very it's a whole so. new economy, and it's a whole new deal, and that's that, that's not going away. And it's on their own time. I think that's yeah. what's making that's it what so enticing love. is that yeah. they can do it when they feel like they're they want to, instead right. of being obligated to go from a nine to five every mm -hmm. single day, Monday through Friday. And it's been very challenging. So you touched a little bit on corporate culture. So yeah. you know, being in charge of, you know, obviously the hiring, the development, the overall just kind of success of the business. It, to your point about education and trying to shift some of these values, you know, with like uh, the PLI where you're, you know, work with some older, you know, demographics or older generations that are, you know, essentially have these pre-established, mm -hmm. you know, rules and procedures and corporate culture, which is education based, um, you know, showing that degree. How do you come into a situation like that with your own ideals and be able to shift that culture? Is it like, um, is it hard to kind of re-implement and re-kind of structure and re-focus the entire company? Um, and similarly, for somebody trying to start a small business, how do you set those standards from the beginning versus trying to shift them after the fact? Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, yes, it is very hard. And I always say you either, you're either on the bus or you're off the bus, mm -hmm. right, as it comes to change. Mm -hmm. um, and any organization you step into, you're going to get people who immediately buy into the mm -hmm. message, right? And other people who are like, meh. You know, or they're just like, let me check this guy out. Let me mm -hmm. feel this guy out. I'm not really sure yet. I'm not convinced. So, you know, my sales and marketing background comes in handy when I step yeah. into a new company because I know I got to package myself. Yeah. I got to package the message and I've got to get people on board. I spend a lot of time, more time than most, explaining the why behind things. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that I know a lot of CEO friends of mine who are like, just do it because I told you to. That my dad tried that. Yeah, never worked. Never worked, <laughs> never worked for work. me. Yeah. yeah, never worked for me. Um, I want to understand why. Because mm -hmm. uh, when I understand why, now you have my buy-in. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't make sense, then I might ask some more questions, and you can help me understand it and help it make sense, right? But um, I spend a lot of time on the why. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, my first step for the first 30, 60, 90 days depends on the organization and the complexity of the organization. Is really be the student, learn yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. That gains a lot of respect of the team because I didn't just come in there going, okay, I'm Mr. Know-it-all and I'm going to fix everything, right? I'm mm -hmm. going to wave my magic wand and I'm going to make all your problems go away because that's yeah. unrealistic. Mm -hmm. um, I really listen to them. I listen to their input. I get their feedback. What are your pain points? What is working? What isn't working? I don't always agree with them, yeah. uh, right? Because their perspective of what's not working might be very personal and it might yeah. not actually be true, yeah. <laughs> right? They, It's their reality. It's mm -hmm. their perception, but it's not what's actually happening in the organization. 
uh, then I can start implementing change. And then again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm unapologetic about it. This is the course. This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. Again, spending time explaining the why. And this is how we're going to do this. It's not my way or the highway because mm -hmm. I take everyone's input, take everyone's advice. Uh, but at the end of the day, when you're the CEO of an organization, you got to make a call. Yeah. You got to go with it. Yeah. yeah. And I always, there was literally a t shirt at PLI. I could show you a picture of it that they had made up where my favorite expression was, it ain't brain surgery. Okay. And what I meant by that is it's not that complicated. It's not overthink it. But what I really meant by it was that if we make a mistake, no one's going to die. Yeah. <clears throat> Stop taking yourself so seriously. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We mess up. So what? We get up, dust each other off, and we go down with it. And yeah. we make a change. And our, the organizations I've been a part of were always big enough that they had the resources, even when I was starting organizations from scratch, um, but still nimble enough that we could change pretty rapidly, right? So mm. if we went a wrong direction, we can go, oh, course correct. Yeah. Let's go back that way, right? Really, really big companies, that's harder to do because yeah. it's like turning – Bad, Titanic. Bad, the Titanic. Bad, <laughs> they didn't want to use that analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it is. It's like turning yeah. the Titanic, right? And it's really, really hard. But um, again, that culture piece is everything. And and I, I, when I talk about there's no dumb ideas, like people say that all the time, I really mean it. Now, if you tell me the same stupid thing three times, then maybe, but uh, that's a joke. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, you know, I tell you this to everybody, and it's one of my favorite expressions. The difference between arrogance and confidence is the ability to pull it off. <laughs> that's that's the, very true. That's, that's the very true. Yeah. Because uh, if you could do it and you could back that's a good it up, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, I've never heard that analogy before. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a Krauss that line. I guess trademark. <laughs> that's, the gyms. Yeah, that's the Krauss gyms. <laughs> we'll call it the Krauss gyms. That's, yeah. that's really good. My girlfriend's going to get mad at that one for sure. That, <laughs> no, that's a good, that's, that's wisdom. That's, but that's it's, wisdom. It's really yeah. true. That's the yeah. difference, you know, and because we look, when you're successful in anything, people have a tendency to say, oh, that guy's arrogant, right? Or that way. No, but if you're backing it up and you're actually making it happen, are mm -hmm. you aggregate? Yeah. There is a difference. Yeah. Confidence some is confidence. Facts, some facts behind it. Yeah, yeah like the numbers yeah. don't lie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's true. They are, they are. They are. How did you get involved with Luso? Because I went, went to your guys' event, and that's that's a beautiful facility, man. I've seen yeah, so many you. Lamborghinis and just everything that you guys had there, the elite of the elite. Yeah. Um, so if I may, I had a stopover before Luso. So after okay. I left PLI, I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if I was going to stay in the industry. I, okay. I, I took – at PLI, as you mentioned, we did the key cards, gift cards, all that kind of stuff for the major mm -hmm. retailers. But what we didn't do was the credit cards, the actual financial cards. Oh, okay. So the merchant, all the merchant accounts and everything. Visa, MasterCard, et cetera. Okay. And I was always really interested in that space. So I had a board of uh, directors that was headhunting for a new CEO of a company, happened to be based here in Vegas as well, that made credit cards. Mm -hmm. um, major turnaround job. I'll, I won't mention the name. People can check out my LinkedIn profile. They <laughs> themselves. Yeah. Um, but uh, they had lost money for 20 straight years. Uh, 20 mm -hmm. straight years. Um, I think I was sort of the Hail Mary for the board to say, like, if this guy can't turn this around, then it's sort of doomed. It is the Titanic. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really, you know, so I joined an organization that was negative EBITDA, negative NOI for 20 oh, years. Yeah. Uh, never made any money and very patient money. Investors were putting money in every single year um, to turning it around to a very positive EBITDA company in the two years that I was there. So went there, did what I came there to do. And then exited. So I wanted to share that too. Um, in the in the meantime, I had been introduced to Luso about started about five years ago. Okay, um, know the owners, uh, the original owners of the organization, um, and just respected what they were trying to build. Uh, I think as we talked about a little bit at the event, you know, when I came to town because I'm a car guy, have a major car problem. My car dealers don't seem to think I have a problem, but I, I know I have a problem. Yeah. First step to recovery is admitting you have yeah. a problem. <laughs> um, but uh, I came, when I came here to town back in 2000, again, 15 for my second time, uh, there, I couldn't take, there was nowhere to take my cars to get work done, to get them tinted, to get wheels and tires, to get all the different things that I wanted mm -hmm. to do. I, I don't like stock, you know, stock is boring, right? So how could I jazz up my vehicles? So literally I had to go all around town. I had to go to five different places to oh, get wow. five different things done. And I'm like, this, this is ridiculous. There's, there's gotta be a better way. Yeah. You gotta build a better mousetrap. There's gotta be a one-stop shop, right? One, you know, and versus LA and Orange County where you could throw a rock and you could hit a, you could hit a place that could do all the things you wanted under one roof, right? So why couldn't we bring that here? And given yeah. all the California transplants yeah. we have here in Vegas, there had to be a better way. So there was a shared vision there of again creating a one-stop shop, doing it at a very high level of quality, doing it at a very you know high level of customer service. Uh, so yeah, so we'd known each other 
Um, I'm in transition right now, business-wise, running my consulting practice. I've actually got another company lined up that I'm supposed to be working with, hopefully here in the near future, but uh, candidly sitting out a non-compete agreement. Those are always fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but playing by the rules and being good. Uh, but so it, it, I had an unusual amount of free time which I haven't had since I was like 12. Uh, so uh, I'm not one to sit home uh, and do nothing. Plus I probably would have driven my wife and everybody else crazy <laughs> in the process because nice. uh, I'm just too type A, right? Uh, so yeah, so John and I talked uh, and uh, we're like, you know, let's get more involved. Let's do this thing. And again, let's take this thing to the to next level. level. Uh, and that's what we've been doing. So it's really exciting. It's fun. I know you were probably going to add it to it. It's, it's amazing. Everybody finds the need. They figure out what is wrong and then... But people like yourself, that are visionaries, they go and build it. That's you right. know what I mean, and that, that's pretty awesome. Well, to necessity be able to see is the mother of invention, right? As yeah. they say. So yeah. But can you kind of share? So you guys mm -hmm. do um, everything there. I mean, it's it. You can build. I mean, you wrap. I mean, you guys do the whole nine. Custom customization is is literally AA. You know, top tier. No, there. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, we do. So we do everything from you know your your custom car wraps that you see rolling around town. So when you mm -hmm. see that you know lime green car, it's probably not paint. Yeah, uh, it's, <laughs> it's probably a vinyl wrap, which is. Which I actually is, didn't know that. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I always yeah. thought it was paint. <laughs> no, yeah. it's not. It's more than likely not. It's, I mean, you can paint it, but. That's even more heat, expensive. Yeah. Especially with heat yeah. here, too, and everything. <clears throat> um, we do paint protection film, which is, you know, a lot of people refer to it as a clear bra. Mm -hmm. uh, best form of protection you can get on your paint. We do all kinds of detailing, auto spa services. So, again, it's Luso Auto Spa and Design because we do, you know, all your, I hate to say basic, that sounds too minimal, but we do all your basic auto spa stuff, washes, waxes, mm -hmm. ceramic coating, paint corrections. The customization is where it gets exciting and fun, right? So, wheels, tires, suspensions. We do complete 4 by 4 truck builds. Uh, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we're, this market is growing. Uh, it's an eclectic market. Mm -hmm. uh, we cover a lot of different demographics. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're working on uh, Honda Civics, no offense, Honda Civic owners, uh, to, and then hypercars like Bugattis and Paganis and you name it. So, and everything in between. Yeah. So it's fun. It sounds it intimidating, amazing. though, to be able to work on somebody's car that you know is a million dollars, two million dollars. I'd be a little nervous for that. Yeah. You know, it's funny. The guys <laughs> but literally do, have like 12 of them. Yeah, like, that's true. Like, yeah. Literally. So like, you ask our yeah. installers, and we have yeah. the best We have the best guys in the business. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that. Because really, I've seen it all. I've seen the good, the bad. You kind of have to, to be honest. No, I've yeah. seen yeah. the good, the bad, the ugly from here to California to Arizona. And we've got the best installers, I really believe, in the industry. And, you know, that first time you're touching a Lamborghini, it's a little intimidating. And then you, uh, you <laughs> figure out, you know what? It's really just another car. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and you have to, it's almost like a doctor doing surgery. Yeah. Like you have to go, you have to go someplace in your head where you're like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I can do this. I can cut on this. It's, it's the same kind Some of Some learning process. It's definitely yeah. a learning process. I walk by when I'm afraid to even like look at it wrong. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. I've, when I was at their facility, I mean, they, they had everything there, man. They had probably a dozen Lamborghini SUVs, oh, wow. Rolls Royces. I mean, the whole, the whole nine, some customization. Yeah. So it was beautiful. Thank you. But you know, it's, it's great to be able to see that. So. One question I have for you is, what is the one thing um, that you know now that you wish you knew when you first started your business? Oh, wow. This is going to sound harsh, but uh, what I learned a little later in life than I wish I had was people are, in, in essence, incredibly selfish. Okay, and, I love the honesty. And, yeah. and, and, and it sounds really negative. I don't mean it as negative as it sounds. Um, but you have to come to realization at some point professionally, personally, that people are generally almost always looking out for number one, mm -hmm. right? So now knowing that you can work with that and sometimes mm -hmm. even use that to your advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, again, so I don't mean it as negative as it might come across. Um, but that's that's a hard lesson to, especially for someone like me, I trust everyone until you give me a reason not to trust you. Uh, I'm open, <laughs> open arms, open heart. That's right? okay. yeah. Those yeah. all that's he always says, "Don't trust nobody." Yeah. 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 No, yeah. And that's and there's two, yeah. there's two camps yeah. here, right? You're either yeah. we laugh all that's the time. That's literally yeah. our, our opposite. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's look, you're, and and I completely get, and I respect completely yeah. both perspectives, right? And I always yeah. say, I've said this to everybody in my life, professionally and personally. I live in the gray. Mm -hmm. I live in that in-between space. Okay. Um, I've learned, and I don't want to say, because what I didn't want to become, and I would recommend to everybody, don't become jaded. Mm -hmm. There are really good people out there. Yeah. Yes, there are also really bad people out there, too, that will take advantage of you <laughs> if you let them. But the majority is in the middle. And the, yeah. majority, the majority is in the middle. And uh, so that's where I try to live and try to be. Yeah. But that was a hard lesson to learn, you yeah. know, especially when you are a trusting person and not yeah. naive, um, yeah. Not not gullible by any means, but you're like, yeah, come on in, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, wait a minute, what are you actually up to? What's right? your angle? What's your yeah. angle? What's your yep. thing? So, 
especially in all candor as you reach a certain level of success and financial success and et cetera, then you start getting a little bit more guarded because you're like, hey, why are you talking to me? Why do you even want mm -hmm. to be in my circle, right? What's, do you have an ulterior motive, things of that nature? Um, so I, personally, that's just my personal experience. I wish I'd learned that lesson a little bit sooner. Um, when do you think it, what, what age do you think it took where you knew? Because that's what I was going to get at. People know that you're successful. They know you do well. You know yeah. what I mean? When did you know? Was it you know in your thirties or forties, or did you had to bump, bump your head a bunch of different times? Oh, I bumped my head a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. Um, but I would say probably I tell this to everybody: in your twenties, you think you know everything, you know nothing. Mm -hmm. Your thirties, you're starting to get in your groove, and you're kind of like, all right, I'm starting to figure this thing life out, right? Forties yeah. is where I hit my groove. Yeah, forties for real. That was like, oh, okay, I got mm -hmm. I'll take that. I'm in my forties. So yeah, yeah, I'll no, take no, no. That. I was like, that. okay, yeah. I got this figured out. I'm not yeah. young and dumb anymore, yeah. right? I got some stuff figured out. I put some money in the bank, mm -hmm. right? And now I'm now I can start charting my own path a little bit. Yeah. We do a lot earlier in our career that we have to do. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful feeling when you get to a point where you get to do what you want to do. Yeah. And that's everyone's goal, right? It's not it's not always about chasing money and mm -hmm. stuff. I tell people this all the time. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom. It's everything. You talk about love, like yeah, that's, no, no, that's it's everything. Everything. Yeah. It's yeah. everything. Going where you want, taking vacations when you want, even doing nothing when you want. Uh, people don't yeah. realize how powerful that is. I mean, we're, we're chasing stuff our whole lives. That's uh, special. Yeah, yeah. our whole that's lives. Special. And then when you get there, you're like, oh, okay, that's how it, yeah. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Waiting for, for that. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a great <laughs> perspective. You know, that's a, that's a great perspective for sure. Yeah. For business advice, could you drop a, a, a gem for us? So let's say that um, somebody wanted to start their own business. What would you tell them? Yeah. My favorite, I say this to every consulting client, take care of your people. Take care of your customers. Mm -hmm. The bottom line will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. If you operate your business, I don't care what this business is, in the opposite perspective, you will never succeed. Mm -hmm. Or at worst, you will never reach your full potential. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's that's been my lesson and, and that I learned. And it's been the teaching example I've tried to give to every organization I've been a part of, either the running or consulting take for, is take care of your people, take care of your customers. Yeah. Um, and the perfect example of that is, again, the company we sold to private equity, with all due respect to the private equity group that bought uh, us, um, of course, they parachuted in a bunch of, you know, sorry, like bean corporate counters guys. and yeah, corporate yeah. guys and whatever, uh, and started second guessing a lot of decisions we made mm -hmm. and all the things that had made us successful in the first place, right? And the minute you start making business decisions from that spreadsheet, I think you're doomed. Because you're looking at the numbers. You're yeah. looking at the numbers and you're yep. making short term. I got to fire two people. I got to hire three people. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden you get busy and oh crap, now we need 10 more people. Where are those 10 people going to come from, right? So you're making those in the moment impulsive decisions. You're not looking at it more strategically. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, again, take care of your people, take care of your customers. Yeah. Bottom line will take care of it. I, people are like, but how is that? It is just. Yeah. Trust the process. Yeah. It is possible. It is possible. Yeah. Because without That's your true. employees, what do you got? Without your customers, what do you got? You got nothing. No, I'm building good. in paper. <laughs> no, it's all, it looks just all ROI. It says ROI, ROI, ROI. So, yeah. no, that's excellent. Um, just shifting a little bit, we always ask all of our guests, mm -hmm. favorite restaurant in Vegas? I know we were talking a little bit offline, so no, I, give us give us something special. We, so this, is, this restaurant is special, and I'm, I'm happy to give them this shout out. So Joe Stone Crab. Got Jones. four shops. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So um, favorite restaurant I eat there every week. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm embarrassed. Maybe not embarrassed. To say. Yeah. I, used to, I, used to, I used to eat there three, four times a week. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Come back a little yeah. bit. No, it's very good. Trying to be responsible. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I love Joe's. And uh, it's, it's special to me, too, because, frankly, uh, my first date with my wife was at Joe's. And we oh, actually so had our yeah. wedding reception at Joe's. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, their family. So, yeah. But the food is fantastic. I've eaten at every steakhouse in this town. Okay. I'm not every steakhouse, a lot of business dinners uh, and everybody okay. wants to go to a steakhouse, right? Yeah. Um, their steaks are, I still believe the best in town. Yeah. Uh, seafood, top notch service is amazing. They're just, yeah. I agree with you. Love, 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 love for Joe's. Anniversary, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. This is very good. I went there a couple years back. I um, actually forgot about Joe's. We went for our anniversary yeah. a couple years back. It was very good. No, yeah. I try all the Let's restaurants and we're like, yeah. why didn't we just go to Joe's? <laughs> like okay. every, every time. Okay. Every time. So yeah. Excellent. That's good. That's, yeah. that's a hidden one. Um, what else are you concentrating for, for maybe finishing up this year or maybe next year down the road? I know you've got a non-compete, so I don't know if you, yep. I know you can't talk a little bit about that, but what else are you focused on? Yeah, no, I mean, and I can, so the non-compete just has me kind of sitting on ice for a little bit in, in, a, mm -hmm. in a particular industry. Industry, but I'm sure. free to do everything else in other industries. And um, right now, for the rest of the year, I'm, I'm really focused on the growth and scaling Luso. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Again, we got a, a big, you know, growing market that we need to cater to. Yeah. Uh, we're actually having a really important meeting tomorrow to talk about. Yeah. Okay, what are those next level 
steps that we want to take as an organization. So I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, continuing to focus on my consulting practice and just uh, helping as many companies as I can. Mm -hmm. um, it gets quiet, obviously, here later in the year because companies yeah. have already used up their budgets for that kind of stuff. And then it picks up in the beginning of next year. Um, and talking to a couple people about sort of what's next for me. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm got a lot of gas left in the tank, so I probably yeah. would like to see myself taken over another organization as a president and CEO full time, not just sort of on an <laughs> interim consulting basis. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'm going to continue a lot of the philanthropic and sort of non profit work that I've been doing. You a last of an autism, right? So yeah, so I yeah. was the uh, vice chair of uh, the Granite Gift Autism Foundation for mm -hmm. a few years, and I was also their interim CEO for a year. Um, awesome. Very rewarding work. Um, you know, for all the business people out there, you don't you don't get rich in nonprofit. That's not what it's about. Yeah, um, it's about the mission. It's about what you do. But it was an exciting transition. And I was really proud of the of the. Again, I was the business guy in the room, right? A lot yeah. of nonprofit people are nonprofit people. Uh, good at fundraising, good at those activities, but actually running a business. It's completely concepts that are alien yeah. to them, right? <clears throat> yeah. And I never understood that. I'm like a 501c charity is a tax designation. It is still a business. Yeah, yes. a business is a business is a business, right? So why would you run it any differently without focusing on those? But business. I'm glad you're sharing that. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people are scared to say that. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. So I. So that's the approach that I took and we took, and uh, we had a very important transition because UNLV Medicine was actually running our medical center. Mm. Uh, they were a great partner. They helped us get to where we got. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we knew it was time for change. So orchestrating that transition where we took over the medical center was my primary responsibility. Uh, and that's what we did. So I did that. I served out my year and, and then I left it to the guy we were grooming who's doing a fantastic job. Um, so I, I want to continue to do that. I, we go to, you know, we go to a lot of galas and dinners and charity events and yeah. you get invited to a lot of stuff. A lot of people want you to write checks. Of course. <laughs> uh, they're always asking for checks. But yeah. There's a lot of, I, you know, I we talked about this, you know, offline, right? I, I mean, Vegas is a great city. It's got a lot going Love for it. it. Mm. Um, but there's a lot of deficits, too. And in a town as rich and as vibrant as this town is, um, I don't know why we don't put more money and resources towards kids, towards education, mm -hmm. towards things that really matter. We could build a stadium in a minute. And I'm saying I'm fast. In a minute. <laughs> I'm, I love, this is why I wanted you on. This is in, exactly in why I wanted minute, you on, is your honesty. But why yeah. on earth can we yeah. not fix the issue with schools and hospitals and things like that? You know, I don't know about anybody else listening, but I'm tired of being the 50th out of 50 states in all these categories. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm also focused on. As long as I could be of any influence, of any help, Mm -hmm. that's the stuff that we're focused on, that I'm focused on, is, yeah. is fixing that. That's why when you brought up education, too, I was like, oh, yeah. I could talk for hours about yeah. education. Well, no, you have the, the business mind is not scared, and that's what I loved about it. When yeah. I first met you, I said, oh, Lord, we definitely got to connect. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm filtering a little, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's, it's great, though. But I wanted to yeah. them to at least hear you know, how your mind works and how you've been able to develop. And, mm -hmm. I mean, guys, pay attention to what Peter's doing, man. He's, he's changing changing lives in a lot of different ways, man. So um, special guy. So we appreciate you hanging out, yeah, man. No, Seriously, that was fantastic. Man. Yeah, that was it was an absolute pleasure, man. Appreciate it. Check us out at TheVegasCircle.com, man. So absolute pleasure, my man. Yeah. Thank you very much, man. Thank it was you, good man. stuff. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay.